So welcome to the extended body bucktail deceiver mini series. Uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to break down four different ways to extend the body of a fly and every single version and topic is going to be based around one of the simplest, most effective patterns ever developed ever by Mr. Bob Popovics. It is maybe from the 1970s, as far back as that. It's about 50 years old, maybe even getting towards 55 years old. And the reason why we're doing this is because in those 55 years, yeah, I don't think anybody's really improved it. Nobody has improved upon this. It is. It has stood the test of time as being one of the most functional, castable, fishable flies in the realm. This is gonna be hard to do with you doing that. Mal, are you joining us for a fly tying video? That right there is Malachi. He's gonna be joining us for at least the intro until nap time. We'll see how far we get and how quiet he can stay. Not only has this pattern stood the test of time, I'm not sure if anybody's improved on it. It is exceptional and yet it is so old school. So I want to dedicate a series to reviving it as best as I can, bringing it to your attention. If you don't know where to start in your journey on predator fly design, I don't care where you live in the world or what you fish for, if it eats a bait fish that's over four inches, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine inches, this is the pattern you should learn first. This is the technique, tying bucktail in the round symmetrically, that you should learn first. This is the material set that you need, bucktail. That's it. If you want to throw some flash in, by all means. But that's it. This is the fundamentals. And so before we dive into all the different versions of how to extend it, we need to hit home bucktail deceiver fly design. Because in all of the videos, the design elements, what you do and why you do it, how you select your hair, how you space the hair, how you create the taper, how dense it is, is the same. But once we get that out of the way, then we can focus on all the different techniques that are hopefully going to result in the same end product, but are going to be more or less accessible to you for you to choose to meet your needs, right? That, that's the goal. The goal is to look at one pattern, break it down into a bunch of different ways so that you can choose which way is best for you. But at the end of the day, you got the same beautiful 50 year old fly that's going to last a lifetime. And hopefully the fundamentals in this video will serve you a lifetime. Now, if you guys can't tell, I'm not 55 years old. Uh, this design layout and the principles and everything we're going to go over is coming to you from Mr. Bob Popovics, who is a legend of saltwater striped bass uh, and, and really the pioneer of bucktail flies. Now he has a book called Fly Design that will revolutionize your fly tying if this is what you're into. If this is the style you want to pursue, fly design is a must. Hopefully this video just complements that. It gives you a visual aid to the pictures in the book. You can put it all together and off to the race as you go, tying predator flies for the rest of your life. So we're gonna dive into a sketch here. I'm gonna sketch an extended body bucktail deceiver and we're gonna break down the fundamentals of what makes the bucktail deceiver a bucktail deceiver so that we can then jump into all the different extensions that are gonna complement the fly. So what we have here is a Popovix BTD, Bucktail Deceiver. And you can see it's composed of two parts. You have the hook and you have the extension. This is the extended body. If you look at a normal hook, this is all you have room to tie on. And if you only have four inch hair, well then you can only make a four inch fly. But if you tie an extended body, if you give yourself a body that you can extend behind the hook, connect it to the hook, now with that same four inch hair, you can create a seven and a half inch bait fish with nothing but exposed tip ends from the shoulders, the broadest point of the fly, all the way to the tail. So the way we're building taper is quite unique because we're using the bucktail at full length for every single tie-in zone. 
Every single one, you're using it at full length. Now there's good reason to this, and it's because bucktail is tapered. It is literally fatter in the butt, skinnier at the tip. Think of your fly rod. Your fly rod is, has a big, fat, beefy butt section and a skinny little tip. And when you load it and unload it, it's the tip that is being driven and waving back and forth and creating all that line speed. Bucktail behaves just like your fly rod. All the movements is in the tip. So what you want is you want to use the full length so you have the full bending of the hair, the full progression, the full range of movement that the hair can have. You want the stiff, bulbous butt sections to create all this volume. We're not doing hollow ties. We're not doing anything technical. It's just straight bucktail. Uh, but you're still going to be able to build volume because of the thick diameter bases. And then you're going to have the progressive taper and the tips. And the tips are all going to be taper based on the distance in the tie-in points. The distance and the tie-in points. So the extension, the extended body, you're going to maybe run half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch. And look at the taper and the tips. Half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch. And as you progress forward, maybe between stack six and seven and eight, ooh, look at how tighter these are. These get way tighter. Look at this, seven, eight, nine, ten. They start bunching up. And what you see is we're building volume, we're building our silhouette through density. Just, it just, everything gets closer together. And the amount of hair you use increases fractionally for each step. So step one's gonna be the sparsest, and then step two might be the same, and then step three might be 5% more. Step four might be the same, step five might be 5% more. So by the time you're on the hook, it's quite a bit denser, maybe 20, 30% denser, but we're also getting more frequent stacks, so they're piling up on top of each other, and what you see is you build shoulders into the fly. You build this kind of nice teardrop height, and that height can't collapse really because there's just a good amount of hair there. And that's okay, this sounds, mm, you gotta be careful. I'm not talking about overdressing a fly, but you do dress a bucktail deceiver. It is not a hollow fly. There's, there's no illusion of bulk going on here. And you will be blown away by the castability of a dressed bucktail deceiver. Because when it gets wet, this thing will just, it'll skinny right up into just about nothing. And it will have water weight, which is a scary word in streamer fly tying for some reason, but in this context, it will blow your mind. If you are familiar at all in the pike and muskie world of flies, I promise you this is five times more castable than the best casting fly you've ever tied. You won't feel it, it's not there. The water weight and the silhouette, the amount of air resistance negate each other. It just, whoop, the fly disappears. It is a perfect casting fly, and the water weight is what makes it so. The water weight is what makes it perfectly castable. So don't try to fix any of this. It is perfect the way it is. So to recap, what we're gonna do is take one material, bucktail. We're gonna tie it in the round with perfect technique, which I'm gonna demonstrate right at the end here so you have that to hang on to at the start of each of the next videos. You're going to build the taper in the tips by using it at full length, by staging it appropriately, the distance between tie-in points is gonna be the distance between the tips. They're gonna match each other. You're gonna use the same distance for most of the tail. As you get towards the hook, they're gonna become more frequent, which is going to allow you to build volume through density in which the water weight retained by the hair is going to negate the air resistance that the fly has in the air, which is going to slink down to basically nothing uh, and it's going to blow your mind and then you're going to have all of the swimming from the shoulders to the tail because of all of the exposed tip sections oh, oh ha, ha. it's phenomenal so that is bob popovic's bucktail deceiver let's throw a hook in the vise i will show you tying in the round and i will show you how to manipulate the silhouette from not round so that you can build this identical fly both high and tight to match, forage that, resemble that silhouette, and also flat and broad, which most forage isn't shaped like that. You'd probably be better off tying in the round, but it gives the fly a flat wing system that suspends in the water column. So it changes your action, and all you gotta do is pinch it while you tighten it. Let's dive in, I'll show you what I mean. We're gonna use Danville fine monofilament in 6,007 inch. 
it's round, it's going to bite into the hair and compress the hollow bases, giving it a little extra volume. It's one of the ways we're gonna build some of the bulk. It's going to maximally compress it, lock it down onto the hook. It grips hooks phenomenally well and does not slip, and it welds itself with CA+. So you have a little super glue CA+, it's, it's gonna make an indestructible fly, and it mono's exceptional for using hair. So I'm gonna show you the foundation of everything we're gonna do. You're gonna take your hair. Uh, you can use a lot of this upper section, which I normally don't use. You can use a lot of this on your mono extension. It's all gonna be uh, fairly non-compressible, and it's gonna slick back kind of nice and straight, and it's gonna make a phenomenal tail section. It literally makes a perfect tail section. So this whole upper third, which I normally ignore on all of my hollow flies and bigger patterns, makes perfect extended body flies. And then as you get onto the hook, you're gonna get more into the primo spot, which is gonna be a little bit, uh, usually just more compressible, a little more trapped air. It also has a little more length to it, which is gonna help fill out your shoulder area. <clears throat> and then I do typically finish with the bottom part of the hair just to get a nice flare, and I'll even blend in some of the dark stuff. If you can tell, all of my heads are just a little dark, and that's literally just by mixing it with some of the back stuff. So that should get you squared away on your hair selection. We're gonna come up and take a chunk from the tip here. You're gonna grab this by the midpoint. You're gonna spin your fingers, open up some of these bases. You're gonna pull out any of the short fibers and fluff. You'll see me stack this in my hand and that's to try to align these butts as best as I can. We will cut them vertically. This is not to introduce taper. We're not cutting it shorter. I'm just evening up the butt so that when I catch them with my thread, I'm not missing any because the butts are not in the same spot. You're gonna put that flat on the hook shank, try to keep the butts vertical, it's quite tricky. I'm going to use something called that I call the Giovanni pinch, and I'm gonna put just three loose turns that are perpendicular, right in a row, right on top of each other. I can then take my thumb, shove it right on top of that thread, and I'm going to just pinch and pinch and pinch, which is going to move the hair away from my pinching and just get it nice and even. I'm gonna say suck all the slack and elastic out of my thread and tie those butts down. Then you can come forward a handful of wraps, come backwards a handful of wraps, and all the wraps holding that in place cannot come undone. That is it. That is tying bucktail in the round. If you just watch that a handful of times, I'm gonna move this around my bend here real quick. If you watch that a handful of times, practice doing this on a fly uh, and just do that over and over and over and over and over and over until you can tie it so that the hair distribution is perfectly even. As long as it's perfectly even, you're doing it right. That's all you have to do. Now, I build most of my flies solely with that technique in the round. This one, that's the only technique you do for the entire fly in the round. Everything's even, everything's round. Same, same, same. <laughs> now, you can manipulate that silhouette, but first you have to be able to get it even. Once you get it even, then you can make it higher and tighter if you want, or you can make it flat and broad, which changes the hang time as it suspends more in the water column. So let me show you that real quick, and then we'll, uh, we'll get out of this one, and uh, we'll start the series proper with a mono-extended bucktail receiver. So same thing. Hair from the same place, this one's just a little bit denser. I'm gonna maybe flick out some of the butts. I'm pinching it at the midpoint. I twisted my fingers to open them up, uh, really get some of that hair out. You get really good at material manipulation here. I'm gonna square those up and cut them flush. Not introducing taper, cutting them flush. We're gonna put that flat on the hook shank, use the Giovanni pinch, suck it down, three perpendicular wraps, Thumbnail right on the thread to move it around. And then you have to get it symmetrical first. Once you get it symmetrical, I'm going to squeeze the sides. It's gonna push hair, top and bottom. Under that pressure from my fingers, I can then suck out the slack. Then I'm gonna catch all those butts, wrap them down good and tight. I'm gonna come forward with a handful of turns, come back a handful of turns so that they're locked in place. <laughs> and I have 
So I have a round tail, but look how high and tight, look how skinny that is. You see how skinny that is versus look how tall it is. So that's pinching it to change and manipulate the angle. Again, I'd recommend just doing it in the round first, but it's a cool thing to know how to do. We'll come forward here and I'll show you how to make it nice and flat, which is a really cool way to build patterns with a lot of hang time. Pinch, twist, open, remove the garbage, pack it slightly, get them as even as you can, flush them up, Come in with the Giovanni, sucker down, uno, dos, tres, and then we're gonna smash our thumbnail. So you can see just how critical the, the getting it symmetrical every single time, getting it caught every single time, it, it becomes a big deal. Now instead of pinching it high and tight, we're gonna squeeze it flat. The hair is gonna run to the sides and run out the sides. I will, maybe I'll just use my right hand, suck out all the, all the slack. I'll let go for a sec, yeah, I'm gonna go back to my other hand. Wrap down all those butts. Put down a little thread head, and I'll whip finish that off so I can show you. <laughs> so of course I have these tall wings behind it, uh, but I don't, can you see how broad that became? Maybe I'll put it against my hand. Look how broad that became. All these top ones flaring way out. So you can make an entire fly that's flat and broad, completely change the action. That is being able to manipulate the bucktail after it's become symmetrical. Uh, but that's three examples of how you're going to tie this in. I would recommend starting in the round. That's what's most critical because if you can do it symmetrically, then you can change it intentionally. And as long as you're doing it intentionally and you're consistent, then you know what the heck you're doing. So with that, I'm going to leave you guys. I'm going to say thank you for watching. I hope this piques your interest and you will tune in for this series as we run through four variations using this technique, using four different ways to extend it to result in the same outcome, the Bob Pop Bucktail Deceiver, the 50-year-old exceptional undefeated champion of the world, basically. As far as predator fly tying goes, this is where you start. Let's do it.